Hey, welcome to our middle school ministry uh, for students in grades five, six, seven, and eight at Mount Pleasant Christian Church. My name is Mike Sheely. I'm the middle school pastor, and we are ready to dive in in this uh, sunny, nice week here in April. We're in week two of a series called Look and See, all about the life of Jesus and how it affects our lives today. Uh, we want you to go ahead and get your Bible open to Matthew chapter four. If you uh, have the Bible app open, it's already pulled up and ready to go for you. Uh, if you have a Bible, a print Bible, uh, you want to go ahead and look at the table of contents and then see where Matthew is. Once you find Matthew, then find chapter 4. That's what we're going to be looking at today. While you're finding that, I just want to tell you um, that I love stories. And one of my favorite kind of stories are adventure stories, especially those that come in a series where you can watch more than one and you can keep watching it. Uh, for me, the Avengers series is a recent one that I've been re-watching over again. I, I don't have a particular favorite. Um, I'm not sure about you, but these have just been some great recent action movies. And if I were to tell you like all-time favorite movies, I have watched the most over and over again since I was in first grade, uh, it would be the Star Wars series. I went and saw episode six, Return of the Jedi, when I was in first grade in the theater, and I've been watching these movies in theaters and at home over and over again uh, ever since then. Just some of my absolute favorites, and now I'm even reading some of the books or the stories that are going on outside of the movies uh, just to get more of the story, more of the action. And when it comes to books, The Chronicles of Narnia is one of my favorite series, and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Besides the Bible, this is probably the book that I have read the most over and over again. I've read it to my kids. I've read it with my kids. I've gone to, to schools and read chapters of it for uh, being a guest reader in elementary school. Um, I love reading this story. And so I wonder about you. What's your favorite adventure book or movie? We're doing something different now with Minga. Each week we're going to have one question that we want to see everybody answer. And this is our one question for this week. So you hop on Minga. Tell us on there, what is your favorite adventure book or movie? See what other people have written in there. Um, and that'd be a good chance to kind of get to know some of these stories and maybe even find a story or a movie that you haven't watched or read yet. Uh, some of the best adventures are not the ones we read about, the ones we get to experience ourselves. And a few years ago, our high school pastor, Matt, and I, I got to go to India and work with, with Central India Christian Mission. Part of that was getting a tour and see some of the sites. And here I am with the Taj Mahal. Um, I had been 10 years before, uh, but still going back, this is a crazy, huge, impressive architecture and part of the culture and the history uh, of India. And while we were there, uh, I don't know that Guinness is going to call me back, but my son had an idea and we made the world sandwich. Not the world's largest sandwich, but I put a piece of bread on the ground in India on the other side of the world here in the United States, he put a piece of bread on the ground. And so we had a sandwich with the world in the middle. I'm pretty sure it's the biggest in history. I, I haven't gotten a call back from Guinness on that for sure, but that was just some of the fun that we had um, making a world sandwich, why not? As we look at that trip, one of my highlights was getting to preach and, and having uh, Brother Ajay interpret for me and, and do the teaching, and it was just so good. I learned so much on that trip. I learned that when people pray, God answers. And when you have no hope, no way of taking care of yourself, when you have to trust fully in God, you really see how he works in a way you don't when you think you can take care of it yourself. And I also saw that being a part of the family of God makes you family with anybody, anywhere, anytime. I met people that we had nothing else in common other than Jesus. And that was enough for them to help us out, to open their homes, to, to explain things that we didn't understand, to just help us out because we're family. And that crossed continents and language barriers and hairstyles and everything. Well, when it comes to adventure, one of the things that drives you, if you like adventure, whether it's reading it or doing it yourself, is that curiosity. I wonder what else is out there. I wonder what I could experience. I wonder what that could be like. And the same thing can happen with our faith. We might think, well, I've, I've read, you know, I've been at church, I've read the Bible, I know some things, but aren't you curious? Isn't there more? When you look at the Bible, there are 66 different books in this one book. And I'm wondering if you've read even just all four biographies of Jesus. You might think you know him, but have you slowed down and read through and paid attention to everything he says and does in his biographies, known as the Gospels in there? And you might have some questions, or you might be wondering, like, is it okay to have questions? Like, if I have faith, I'm a Christian, shouldn't all my questions be gone? No, definitely not. 
If you read through scriptures and you see the stories of the disciples in here, there are all kinds of questions, things that they don't understand. They trust Jesus, but they don't fully understand what he's all about. They don't fully understand what he means by being a servant leader. And even I, I've been a Christian for, gosh, for you, it's going to seem like a long time, but for about 25 years, and I've been a pastor for 20 of those years. And in my Bible, if you were to look at it with me, you'll see things that are highlighted uh, in pink like I have over here, that are questions that I'm still asking, that I'm still going to find out more information about. So it's okay to have questions. Questions help us learn new things or help us understand things better. So what questions do people have about God or Jesus? Answer for yourself, like what, what questions do you have? Maybe write one or two of those down. If you're using the Bible app, pop that in the notes. Or what questions have people asked you? Because sometimes when someone knows you go to church, they think you're the one they can ask spiritual questions to. And that should be true. That doesn't always mean you have the answer. So what kind of questions are you wrestling with right now? Or what kind of questions have people asked you recently? I want you to know that you really can believe in God and still have questions. Having questions or doubts doesn't disqualify you from following Jesus. It makes you human. And if you read the story of the disciples in the New Testament, the ones who followed Jesus the closest, they had questions. There were times Jesus would tell a story and they would pull him aside and say, hey, Jesus, what's with the story about the farmer? Don't quite understand that. Or, or he would sit down and be teaching about suffering and, and what was going to happen and just a real heavy teachable moment. And then he looks over and they're arguing over who is going to be most important in Jesus' kingdom. They clearly had questions and didn't always understand what he was talking about. It's got to be okay for us today to have those questions and to work through those in our lives as well. well let's get to our Bible passage today, Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. Uh, we're no longer going to put that up on the screen here. We want you to read along in your Bible uh, or even listen if you don't have it up and ready to go. But Matthew chapter 4, uh, just a small section today, verses 18 through 22. It says, One day... As Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Man, we first hear that story. That sounds crazy, right? Like Jesus comes along, finds some fishermen, and they just get up and leave. They leave their family business. Uh, James and John, their father, are sitting there in the boat. And it seems like how in the world would these guys just leave someone they never met before just because he comes and says to follow him? We know who Jesus is, but did they know who Jesus was? Well, if we dig in and look a little bit more into the story, it wasn't just they stepped out and left everything to follow Jesus the first time they met him. A year had passed. Like, let's look just at Simon, at, at Peter. Um, we talk about his story and his life. Uh, he has seen Jesus in action. He was a student of Jesus' cousin known as John the Baptist. And so he watched Jesus be baptized. And that's when they heard a voice from heaven, God's voice speaking and saying, This is my son. Simon had witnessed that himself. He was there in Samaria. You can find this in John chapter 4 when, when Jesus talked to the woman at the well and, and, and all of a sudden they had a whole village learning about God and his kingdom through that one encounter. He witnessed the healings that Jesus did in Judea and the miraculous transformation at the wedding of water into wine. These four disciples were the main guests with Jesus and his family at that wedding. So he saw Jesus turn water into wine, one of his first miracles. So after nine months of following Jesus, Peter went back to his family fishing business at his lake while Jesus preached in his hometown, and now they are reunited. So this isn't someone he's never heard of before. Not only has he heard of Jesus, he's listened to him, he's learned from him, he's observed his miracles, he's observed his healings, he's observed the powerful work that God is doing through him. And so now when Jesus says, come follow me, for Simon, it's a decision he's probably been thinking about, maybe even hoping would happen, and now it does. And that would have been unlikely in, in Simon's day because most rabbis, teachers like Jesus, wanted some student who was excelling at religious studies, not someone who was doing the basic work of a fisherman. Fishing wasn't easy. It was a family business and it was hard work, but that wasn't somebody who was going to be a religious teacher. 
And Jesus sees something special in Simon and he calls him from that business. But not just Simon. Also Andrew, his brother, and James and John. Uh, these four all together had traveled together with Jesus for, for most of that year. And they've written it, witnessed, if you look over in uh, Luke chapter 5, there's more to this story. And there's a miraculous catch of fish that happens that they see in this moment, right before he calls them to follow him. He's wor- walked into their world of fishing and shown his power and invites them now to walk into his world and receive God's power and be a part of what he's doing. Here's the deal. All that to say, over the next two years, as he trains these disciples and teaches them, they still have a lot more questions. They still have a lot of things they don't understand. There's one day where he asks everybody, what are people saying about me? And they tell them what everybody's saying. He says, well, what do you say? And Simon says, you're the rescuer, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ. And he says, yes, like you get it. And the very next moment, he's talking about suffering. And when Jesus talks about suffering, Peter says, no, 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 that will never happen to you. And he's totally wrong. He doesn't understand what's going on, even though he's excited. Well, just like with those disciples, as we enter into our relationship with Jesus, we can be ready for Jesus to teach us new things. If we'll look and see what he did and said, we'll understand things better and we'll be challenged to change in that process. But here, I need to back up a minute and ask this question. What do you usually do when you have questions about God? And what else could you do? Do you have a parent you could ask? Do you have a small group leader you could talk to? Do you contact me with your questions? Do you ask Siri or Alexa or go on a search engine and look for answers? All those places can get you answers, some more reliable than others. If you generally like to go online or just ask your digital assistant to help you find answers to the Bible, please let me help you with some resources like BibleGateway.com and the YouVersion Bible app where you can find reliable resources. But don't stop asking questions and don't stop searching. We want you to grow in that knowledge and that information. But here's the deal. Ten years ago, when I went to India, I had never been there before. I didn't know very much about the country. All I knew was that our church loves the people of India, has great partnerships there where we're helping with things like like hospitals, medical clinics, um, with schools, uh, with feeding people. And I wanted to go and be a part of that. But I didn't just walk out the door and leave. Like We put together a plan to travel and what we would do when we got there and who we would connect with. If you're going to grow with God, if you're going to become more like Jesus, it's great to have questions, but then what's your plan to grow? Let's look at these different areas, and I'm going to go through these kind of quickly, and then I'll tell you a little activity you can do to help process a little bit more. First of all, what's your what, right? What do you want to learn? Is there a big question? Maybe one we mentioned earlier, maybe one that you've had, maybe one somebody else has asked you. Is there a book in the Bible that seems interesting? Is there a topic you want to better understand? What is it that you want to learn? And then how? How are you going to keep learning and growing? What action steps do you need to take today and this week so that you actually start this process going? How will you spend your time with God? Reading your Bible and prayer is great, but do you enjoy drawing? Do you like music? Do you like to journal? How could those things be a part of your process of learning and understanding what's going on? Do you love nature and being outside? How could going in God's creation help you to connect with him and get to know him better? And then when? For some people, mornings are the best time of day to sit down and get their day focused on Jesus for the day. But others aren't morning people. So it's more in the evening. But then some get tired and fall asleep in the evening. So set a specific time of day. You probably have a a digital reminder or a a clock, a watch, an alarm, something you can set that reminds you at a certain time of day to spend time with God. Is that going to be perfect every day? No, and that's okay. Some days aren't, but what's the main pattern of time that you're going to set aside? Then not only when, but where? Is your room a place where you can go and have some silence or do you have siblings in there? Is there a, a place around your house you can go? Is it a matter of like you're physically in a place, but you put on headphones and play some instrumental music, something that won't have words to distract you, but that helps you feel kind of isolated? How can you get that focused on Jesus? And then why? When it comes to this learning, why is it you want to learn what you want to learn? Is it so that you can help get answers to your own questions, or are you trying to help somebody else out? And then who? Who can you invite to this journey along with you? One of my favorite things is to get to do Bible study with other people. And right now, I'm in a small group of guys and we meet every week and we're going through and looking at the life of Jesus in great detail to understand what we can learn from him as husbands and fathers and dads. Uh, And so who are you going to invite to come along with you or who do you want to share with you? 
Maybe the what you want to learn is a question somebody else asked you. That's why you're doing this study. And so once you're done with that study, you can share it with somebody. Or even better, you can invite them to do the study with you so they can learn alongside of you. So what's your plan? What do you want to learn? How are you going to do it? When are you going to spend time with God and where? Why are you doing all of this? And then who can you share it with? I want to challenge you not to rush through those questions. I want you to take some time uh, today, preferably, um, if not today, then sometime this week, to sit down and write your answers out to each of those six questions to help you reflect and think about that. I also want to invite you to help us with a similar activity we're doing. Uh, we have a survey called the Choose Your Adventure Survey. The series we're teaching in May is going to be based on questions that you've asked. The previous weekend, last weekend, um, students like you submitted questions that you wanted to know the answers to. Topics, books of the Bible, that kind of thing. We put them all together into a short little survey that you can take with the link in the Bible app or the link here in this video description. Uh, you need to take that survey um, as soon as you can to get those results in so we can get that process and plan our May series. But we're going to address questions that you've been asking and that you want to know about. Uh, also, coming up here the first weekend of May is an opportunity for you to invite some people that are friends of yours, maybe teammates or classmates that don't go to church anywhere, to get involved in a fun activity where they can kind of get to know more about us and what's going on here. It's called Double Dog Darathon. You can find out more information at mpcc5678.com slash ddd. It may sound as crazy to invite someone to this game as Jesus inviting the disciples to quit fishing and go follow him. This is not that radical of an invite. This is just a game, uh, but it's a fun scavenger hunt game that will last uh, from 2 to 8 p.m. on Saturday, May 1st. And then on Sunday, and we're still working out the details, we're going to have a celebration, um, most likely here on our YouTube channel, showing you photos uh, from all those scavenger hunts and announcing who the winners are and getting that information all out and ready to go. That's our study for today. We hope that you were challenged, that it's okay to have questions, but let those questions lead you to get to know Jesus better. And if you're going to do that, you need to have a plan. So sit down and plan out what you want to learn, why you want to learn it, when and where you're going to spend this time with God, um, and then look at who you can share with what you've been learning. Thank you for being with us today. Let me pray for you, and we'll close out. God, thank you for this time together. Sometimes you read the Bible and it seems like, man, those disciples, they just, they really understood it. They just followed Jesus right away. But when we understand that time has passed and they've been wrestling with this, I pray you would help these students, whether they are somebody who were just now starting to get to know Jesus or someone who's been wrestling with it for a year or years, help them to see who Jesus is, to bring their questions to scripture, to find answers, and then to find community and help as they find trusted people to help them decide if they want to follow Jesus like those disciples did. Thank you for your word and how it challenges us and changes us today. Amen.